Good morning, everyone. This is Yvonne Sewell. Well, my writing name is Yvonne Mason. My married name is Yvonne Sewell. And I wanted to talk to you today about, I don't know, plethora of things that being April 1st, the day when pranksters are out in mass numbers playing tricks on people. But I was sitting here looking at my desk, which looks like it threw up. And I've been working on Justice for Cindy. Now, y'all all know that I write true crime, and I write true crime because I have to. I have to give a voice to those who can no longer speak for themselves. And I'm finding this book not difficult to write, but sad. Number one, Donald Glenn Richardson is still among the living, sadly, and Cindy isn't. And as I'm putting together where Cindy's body was found, the four different places Cindy's body was found, I get angry. Get very angry. Because Donald Richardson is still enjoying life where Cindy nor her family isn't. Now, he made the statement when he was talking to the police after he lied. He said, I am sorry for what I did. She was tired of living. That is all I have to say. End quote. What I want to know is who made Donald J. Richardson judge and jury and executioner of this beautiful, vivacious young woman? How did he know she was tired of living? He beat her down. He abused her. He segregated her from her family. He fed into whatever emotional upheaval she already had in her life. How did he know she was tired of living? How did he know that she wanted to die. He didn't. What Mr. Richardson knew was that Mr. Richardson was a selfish, self-centered, narcissistic sociopath who had a criminal record that the state of Oregon never considered who didn't care who he hurt who brought someone into the house 24 hours after he killed his wife oh he didn't just kill her he brutally brutally executed her But yet, Donald Richardson still lives. And the state of Oregon thinks he can be rehabilitated. The state of Oregon is just as complicit in the second crime as they were in the first because Donald Richardson should have been in prison a long time before he killed his wife. People like Donald Richardson prey on the vulnerable. They are the abusers of the world. They are the controllers of the world. They are the ones who seek out those who 
are crying for help. And he knew it. Not only did he knew it, but when he brought the second woman into the house, the same house where he had so brutally executed his wife, this woman had a child. What was in that man's mind? I would dare to venture that he had nefarious acts roaming around in his mind had he not been arrested and convicted. And the reason I say that is because he perpetrated a crime when he got out that is just beyond comprehension. It was on a child. And yet this man will be released I think next year from prison for the second crime. Please tell me where the justice is for Cindy and the second victim. Oregon says, well, he's been rehabilitated. Well, they said that before. People like Donald Richardson do not get rehabilitated. No, they don't. Because it is as much in their DNA as the color of their eyes. People like Donald Richardson will continue to commit crimes as long as they live and breathe and are physically able because they get away with it. The state of Oregon has some of the most liberal statutes I've ever seen in in all the years that I've studied statutes and, and laws and criminal activity. The man had, I can't tell you, the DUIs and driving with suspended license, and he never served any length of time. Oh, at one time he was on probation under the judge's direction and the only person he had to answer to was the judge. So if he chose not to, he didn't. Donald Richardson blamed all of his acts, the first crime, the second crime, he blamed all of his acts on the victim and the victim's family. He never took responsibility for anything he ever, ever did. And the state of Oregon was complicit. His own psychiatrist, after he murdered Cindy, his own psychiatrist said, he is not a harm to others as long as he doesn't drink and do drugs. Well, the man was in jail when the psychiatrist examined him. The man lied to the psychiatrist. He twisted and turned that psychiatrist who should have known better like a leaf in the wind. So he got out. And he committed more crime. And when he gets out next year, he will commit even more crime. He will only be 71 years old. He will commit more crime. Donald Richardson does not deserve to breathe free air. Did the punishment fit the crime for what he did to Cindy? No, it did not. And the state of Oregon? Should they bear the burden? Yes, they should. Because they were responsible for allowing a man who they knew was a criminal to get out to commit a second crime. To ruin someone else's life. Another family's life. Actually, it was two families. My degree is in criminal justice. My husband is retired from the state attorney's office here in Florida, and I have never, ever 
ever in all the crimes I have studied, I have never seen such a miscarriage of justice in my life. I know I spoke about this in my last podcast, but this this story haunts me. It haunts me even more than Silent Scream did when I wrote about Gerard Schaefer's victims. This story haunts me to the point that it's difficult to write. Not because I don't understand that I do, the man was evil, but because Cindy is crying out so much for justice, not for herself, but for the 13-year-old child that Donald Richardson perpetrated his crime on. Donald Richardson should have never, ever, ever been released from the Oregon penal system. He should have served life without parole. If they didn't want to execute him, they should have given him life. If Donald Richardson was able to get out of prison for a capital murder crime... Imagine the other criminals that are walking free in that state, free to perpetrate more crime against people in that state. The state of Oregon has some of the most liberal criminal justice laws I've ever read in my entire life. I do not understand the mindset of the people in that state. Do they all want to sit on the corner and sing Kumbaya and everybody love everybody? That's not the way the world works. We do not live in the land of Oz. Nor do we live in a Pollyanna land of Candyland. Where all you do is slap a wrist and say go with God and do no more harm. Criminals don't do that. Because once they get away with it, they continue to get away with it. All of these psyche valves, all of the counseling in the world would not have changed Donald Richardson for the best. Donald Richardson knew exactly what he was doing. I do not understand the state of Oregon. I do not understand the liberal-minded people that think our prison systems are criminal are not criminal but are yeah they think they're criminal they do they think that no one should go to prison and that everybody is just misunderstood okay explain to me how Donald Ja Richardson was misunderstood His entire personality and his entire psychic makeup screams evil. How is he misunderstood? One way he was misunderstood is the state of Oregon really thought in their infinite liberal minds that he was rehabilitated. Well, when he told his second victim, I've already killed once and got away with it. I don't mind killing you. What does that tell you? Was he rehabilitated? No, he was not. If anything, he learned more about his craft in prison. There's absolutely no reason in the world for this man to be out of prison. And the more that I listened to the case file... And the more I hear him talk and the more I hear his narcissistic, sociopathic, pompous attitude, the more I know this man does not deserve to breathe free air. Dave Fraunheimer, who was the Attorney General, and the defense attorney who represented Richardson in this case, should be prosecuted as accessories to this second crime. Dave Frauenheimer is now dead. But they helped to perpetrate the second crime. 
What is sad is nothing was learned from this. The state of Oregon still has very liberal criminal justice statutes, and they still believe that people don't belong in prison. I don't understand it. They still believe that people can be rehabilitated. They cannot. Even someone who has committed a quote-unquote minor felony, if they stay in prison long enough, they become what is called institutionalized. They cannot, will not, and do not function on the outside world. They will commit more crime and it will escalate. It's just the way of the world. The state of Oregon owes these two families more than an apology. I'm not even sure that they could ever repay these two families for the injustice that has been served for Cindy and these families. Because you see, when they let Donald Richardson out on appeal, they basically told the family that her life was not worth anything. They basically told the family that Cindy deserved what she got. Now, I know some of my friends are liberals and some of my friends don't agree with me and that's okay, but understand this can happen to any one of us on any given day. It can happen to our children, it can happen to our spouse, it can happen to our parents. Someone can go in and take a life on any given day. Now you cannot honestly tell me that if or when that happens that you can stand by and say they can be rehabilitated. Human nature doesn't work that way. We have to understand, yes, in the past there have been innocent people sent to prison. I get that. But our technology, our forensics has evolved so much in the past 20 years that that very seldom happens anymore. Is our criminal justice system perfect? No, because we're all humans and humans err. But I would rather err on the side of caution than let a criminal walk the streets to commit another crime. Donald Richardson should never, ever, ever be released from prison. This man is exactly where he needs to be and where he needs to stay. And then you scream, well, what about his rights? Understand. It was not his right to murder and dismember Cindy. It was not his right to abuse her too the point that he put a bullet in her head. What about Cindy's right to life? Yeah, I know we scream abortion. It's the mother's right. What about the children's right? What about that baby's right? What about Cindy's right to life? What about Cindy's right to be able to live a life of peace? And then you might say, well, she had a right to live. Yes, she did. Except she couldn't. Because you see, Donald Richardson abused her to the point that she was beat down. I've been there. What about the child's right not to be abused? Donald Richardson should never, ever, ever get out of prison. He gave up his rights to freedom when he committed two capital crimes the state of Oregon should be ashamed. No, this is not an April Fool's joke. 
this is very important to me because Cindy has become part of me now. Cindy has become part of my heart, part of my soul. Cindy has been robbed. Cindy has been robbed of growing old with her family of seeing her nieces and nephews grow up. Her nieces and nephews have been robbed of her wisdom and her love and her laughter. Donald Richardson is still alive and moving around in this world. I want to read you something. It's a poem Cindy wrote, and this will go in the book. She wrote it in 1975. It's almost as if Cindy understood something was going to happen to her. I Sit Alone by Cindy Ricketts Casting its shadow, the crescent moon fell upon my corrugated face. Through the brittle lace curtains, I sit alone. The rhythm-like squeaking of the rocking chair echoes through the house in eeriness only death knows. To be, to be forgotten soon, along with the many who have lived an anger-filled life, beams of daylight pass swiftly through my fragile gray hair. The last time the cry of the phoenix heralds the new day, while my dying soul goes out, a dampened fair smoldering in its own ashes. Poignant, prophetic. I leave it for you to decide, and I leave it to, for you to ponder why was there injustice for Cindy? Why does the state of Oregon have such liberal, lax, capital crime statutes? Until next time, this is your indie author, Yvonne Mason, signing off. Oh, and by the way, you can read you can read Silent Scream and The Last Rites, which are both true crimes, which I feel very strongly about. You can get them on Amazon. They are downloadable. You can also get them in paperback, along with my other books. Until the next time, love, live, and laugh.